Alex and Jess have arranged to come round to the owner's house to see the car, and more importantly, to take it for a test drive. <clears throat> Ian, Mandy. Ian's Mandy. Mandy, not very well. Oh, hiya. Hear about the car? Oh, the person that's going to look at the car should be coming in a minute. Oh, it's not here? It should be right there. Oh, OK. This is Mandy. The owner of the car is unavailable to do the viewing, but has sent his grandson out to talk to Alex and Jess. That's all right. Yeah. Is this your car? Sorry, I didn't speak to you on the phone. No, yeah. no, no, it wasn't. It was uh, my granddad. Oh, OK, yeah. Oh, great. Looks nice inside, actually. Is there? Just want to see as well if there's. Uh... As they look the car over, Alex makes sure the rear door has got the child lock on. Very good. The child locks. Look at the boot. As Alex fiddles for the boot release, he plants his special spy camera in the car, so we can see how this scam progresses later on. Okay. Ah, oh, yeah, there's enough space for. Jess makes out she isn't feeling well. This is a key element to the whole scam. <laughs> How it falls off and so on. Oh, yeah. Are you feeling all right? <laughs> sorry, she's had food poisoning all night. This sorry, is... I'm sick on you, I'm very sorry. <laughs> she's trying not to be sick on you. <laughs> right, are you feel? are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't go in for very long. Okay. Do you mind if we take it for a no, quick, no, uh, no, quick, no, quick no, do, you, do you want to pop in the front? Yeah, and yeah. You're right at the I'm back. I'm going to get in the back. Alex makes sure that Jess gets in the car seat where the child lock is turned on. And this gives Jess the opportunity to plant our second in-car camera. Right, just take a quick... OK. OK. Yeah, it's cool. We've got a little kid. He's only about 10 months, little Paul. Alex wastes no time in making small talk to put the mark in the comfort zone. Oh, that's good, that's the uh, lock to go down. And that's lock. You know, make sure that it doesn't fall apart. <laughs> Whilst he's doing this, he is keeping an eye out for a suitable place to pull over. When he finds one, he'll cough to give Jess the signal to begin the con. Show and roll there's the signal. Oh. Oh. Okay, 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 don't panic, don't panic, don't panic. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Okay, can you open the door for it? Jess can't get out of the car. The child lock is on. This puts the mark in an impossible situation, and the pleas for help force the victim out of the car. Can you open the door for it? One push of the central locking button, and it's all over. Hi. They've got away with a 20 grand car for less than 10 minutes work. It all started as a favor to his grandfather taking a test drive in an expensive car. And within 400 yards of his home, he'd lost it. The way they did it was just so simple, yet it actually gets you out of the car. So, what advice is there for doing that test drive? Ask more questions before we get in the car and so on like that. You know, because they just came from nowhere. I didn't know their, I think he told me his name. Basically, I didn't ask that many questions and I would have brought someone else with me. If you are taking people for a test drive in your car, but for some reason you have to stop, then make sure you take the keys out of the ignition before leaving the vehicle. For this hustle, Jess has placed an advert in the local paper for a car at a bargain price to draw in a Hello. mark. Hello. Hi, I'm uh, standing up about the, uh, the advert for the car. Uh, really you know what the best thing to do if you want to come down and have a look at it? That would yeah. probably be the best thing. Um, of course, our hustlers have no intention of selling a car. They're only after the money. The scam relies on front. The mark has to believe we are who we say we are. There are three important elements to this scam. The mark has to have a reason to bring his money. He then has to give us that money. Then he has to let us walk away. Leaving the mark home alone. 
Alex, Jess and Paul have found an ideal property they know will be empty for the afternoon and they know how to gain entry to a house. Right. Key. Remember, Leave keep the, the phone, phone off the, the hook. hook. Right. See you in a minute. See you when you've got the cash. Alex and Paul make themselves scarce, while Jess gets on with rigging the spy cameras to record today's hit. The mark arrives. Jess calls up the boys so they can eavesdrop on her progress. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Tracy. He gets down to business and checks out the car for sale. It's a bit messy. We're going to want us to give us a little hoover before. And... He seems happy enough and goes ahead with the purchase. That's so much trouble getting here anyway. It's important that Jess gets him inside the house to complete the transaction. But he doesn't realise that Alex and Paul are listening to everything that's said and are about to turn up posing as policemen. I think he's, uh, he's about to have money. It's all right, don't worry, I'll just give the count now. Any other one? Jess takes the Mark's money and goes to put it away in the drawer. But in reality, she pockets it. You sure you don't want a drink or something? The offer of a drink is the cue for the boys to ring the doorbell. Hang on, it's two seconds, I might be them just now. Tracy Rutherford. Yeah? I'm D.I. Steele, this is D.S. Mosley. We've got a search warrant for these premises. I think you've got the Let wrong my colleague through. Anybody else here? No. As Jess lets the boys in, she passes the money to Alex, leaving Paul to intimidate the mark. I'm D.S. Mosley. We're here to search these premises for stolen goods. What's your name? You've got the wrong house! Failed to mention it. Alex oh makes sure God. the mark can see that Jess has been arrested for having a stolen car, which he's just paid thousands of pounds for in cash. Well, when Johnny gets back... Do you have any ID? Right, get in the car. Their part over, Alex slips out of character as Jess slips out of the handcuffs. Alex checks the ill-gotten gains. You came to pick up a car. Do you know it's illegal to buy anything that you know or suspect to be stolen? Believing Paul to be a real policeman, the Mark is frightened that he too will be arrested and complies with Paul's instructions. All right, I'll check your story. If everything checks out, it'll be fine. Put your hands on the table. If you move, I'll arrest you. Do you understand? Stay there. Don't move. The team drive away confident the mark will stay put. The mark is now home alone and the minutes begin to tick by. After 10 minutes, the mark still hasn't moved. He is totally convinced by the team's play acting. Nearly 20 minutes have elapsed since the team drove off and the Mark's curiosity gets the better of him and he goes to investigate. His face says it all. The truth slowly dawns on him. 
The car's gone, and so has his money. He came to buy a car. He gave the money to a friendly Jess, who was arrested as a car thief. And he was told to stay put by a police detective. Nothing is as it seems, apart from him being down thousands of pounds, courtesy of the real hustle. It's time for the mark to find out what's really happened. So I'm, I'm shaking, I'm still shaking, I can't believe this. She just made me feel comfortable and I sat down and thought I was really relaxed. And the next thing I knew, doorbell rang and 5-0. It's scary though, it's very scary. And I mean, if it can happen to somebody in real life, then I don't want to be that person again, definitely not. If this guy was really being conned, things would get a lot worse because the first thing we'd do as we drove away is we'd call the police. Remember, this guy's alone in someone else's house without their permission. Who's going to believe his story about three hustlers in a car? Also remember, if you find yourself in an unusual situation and you do get confronted by the police, don't be afraid to check who they are. Ask them for a telephone number where you can call and find out if they are who they say they are. If they're genuine, they should let you do that. Like us. Origami is the ancient Japanese art of paper folding, and Paul's been busy learning how to master it. But as Paul's a hustler, you know he's going to use his newly acquired skill to con people out of their money, and he'll do this by selling you a turkey. Welcome to the Origami Scam. This has always been one of my favourite scams. In 1988, while I was in the army, I took a trip to London, where I saw an old guy sitting on the floor, on a blanket, folding origami out of other people's money. They would give him a £10 note, he would fold it, give it back to them, and they would pay him a couple of pounds for the privilege. But he was actually stealing their money, and he was doing it in a very, very clever way. We're in buzzing Leicester Square, a popular tourist spot, and of course, where there's tourists, there's endless money to be made. Every visitor wants to take home a memento, and here they are spoilt for choice. Paul sets up his unique souvenir of origami money. All you have to do is give him your £10 note, and he'll fold it into an animal of your choice. It's a great souvenir or gift for a friend, and he only charges £2 for his time. It's not long before his first customer comes along. Yeah. Can I get one done for myself like this, you know? Like uh, yeah. I could make one. Yeah, you fancy a memento or a souvenir? Yeah, like more like a souvenir. Yeah, yeah. sure. You have some choices here. You can have a crane. Yeah. You can have one of these, which is a, this is a rooster. Or you can have a butterfly. I kind of like a turkey. The turkey? Let's yeah. call it, let's call it a rooster. Yeah. yeah, you got a 10 pound note there? Yeah. There we yeah. go. How much is it to do? Uh, two two pounds. pounds. Just like that. Takes a couple of minutes. So how long do you take it to learn it? Well, I've been doing it since I was a kid. It's more like a hobby for you. Yeah, but you know, it's a good way of making a little bit of extra cool. cash. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, to speak, this is where it starts to get interesting. We're going to make a, a head out of this. That's wicked. Just believe it or not, is the hardest part. And, uh, and then you create a beak like that, a head. Wow. And that's your rooster. How wicked. See? And uh, what I'll do with that is uh, give Pretty you one of these. Yeah. Put that in there like that. If you ever decide to give it as a gift, you can always right, come back and I'll make some more. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Nice to right. see you. Take care. Hey, you too. Take bye care. bye. See you soon. Bye. That's one satisfied customer. Let's see what he thinks of his purchase. Oh, no, I just went around and saw this guy doing origami and he made me a turkey, like out of 10 pounds. It was amazing the way he did it, like so much of folds and everything. He made some triangles and then in the end, he just uh, pulled out a beak up in the front and just there you go, that's your turkey. Like, almost like really me. Right. Of course, Paul's been up to something, but what is it? It's time to let the truth unfold. That's weird. I gave him a full £10. Pound. To see what Paul's been up to, we need to go back in time. Before he's even set up the store, he pre-cuts some £10 notes in half, then folds those halves the same way as he does on the stall, stopping midway through the process. He does this several times over and stashes them in his bag. 
Then he's all set and ready to go. That's your pants. When he takes the mark's money, he folds it in the same way. But when he gets to the midway stage, he swaps the mark's £10 for the half £10 he folded earlier, using his roller as the reason for digging into his bag. If you missed it, don't worry, so did the mark. Here it is from a different angle. So actually, this man has handed over £12 for a useless half a £10 note, giving Paul a profit of £7. It's impossible to see the switch from where the mark is standing, so he never suspects a thing. The beauty of this scam is that no customer wants to unfold the note, so Paul can stay there all day long repeating the same con, safe in the knowledge that he won't be confronted with an angry, duped customer, and that's exactly what he does. How you doing? You give me the tenner, plus two pounds, I keep the two pounds, you get the tenner back. Another mark gives Paul his £10, and he watches closely in fascination as his nifty fingers get to work. Of course, he doesn't spot the switch and leaves a satisfied customer. Great, take care. Bye-bye. How are you? I'm very good, how are you doing? Not bad. You ever seen origami before? No. Paul manages to entice some more tourists, and they happily hand him their money. Here there. All right. If you uh, just get to find out a little bit. I think we're going to jobs. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you, guys. That was nice. There is literally an endless supply of tourists looking to spend their money, and Paul is happy to take it all. So, uh, that'll bring you good luck. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Let's see what they make of their experience and their new purchase. Came upon a kind gentleman who made us a little rooster. It's a bird. Hustlers will do anything to get their hands on your money. Okay, it's half a ten pounds note. It's a rip off. Well, he's a little trickster, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've got a short notice, really. It's just a half a ten pound note. I've never actually been ripped off before, but I guess it's the first time for everything. So, can I go over there and jump him? <laughs> I think the general rule is always be wary when handing your cash over to somebody, whatever they're going to do with it. You know, in Paul's case, the, it was so covert, the switch, that even if you were watching, it would be very difficult to spot. But, you know, if you like origami that much, do it with blank pieces of paper. It's a lot cheaper. Householders may think when their front door is locked tight, their property is safe. But right now, especially on modern housing estates, the letterbox is an easy way into the home for a thief. So watch out for anyone walking around with a long stick. The team are casing the suburban street. They've picked up three suitable homes and now park up. The team need the cover of darkness and a certain amount of manual dexterity to succeed. Sorry, what it's way past bedtime, but our hustlers are ready to play. Mr. Wilson. Yeah, you were just saying something about something. <laughs> they tool up with their weapons of choice, and we switch to night cameras. But what have they got on the end of those very long sticks? This stick has a magnet on the end and is designed for picking up large bunches of keys, like house keys. This stick has a hook on the end and is designed to pick up smaller keys, like a car key. This stick is actually designed to pick up litter, but it's also ideal for picking up handbags. You can also open up the handbags, go in, take out anything you want. Paul has spotted a house he likes the look of. Only the light in the hallway is on and he's hoping the owners are in bed. Paul checks out the view from the letterbox, and in he goes. A miniature camera captures the stick's eye view of the heist. There's a bag on the floor in reach of his claw. He pulls at the bag to get a better look inside, and is rewarded with finding a purse to snatch. The claw trigger is pulled, and the purse is well and truly grabbed. bit of manipulation and out it pops. 
Meanwhile, Jess has spied a jacket hanging up at the bottom of the stairs. Nothing unusual in that, except Jess's magnetic long stick can reach it easily. The pocket is dipped. And Jess has caught a bunch of house keys. The owners are asleep upstairs, so Jess must be as quiet as she can as she retrieves her haul. Alex uses a torch to help him see into a dark hallway. He's after some car keys left within easy reach on a console table. He must not make a sound either, or he'll disturb his victims sleeping upstairs. The hook proves an ideal choice for snagging the key ring. Fortunately for Paul's victim, he isn't going to steal their money and cards from their purse. Instead, he's going to leave the real hustle equivalent of a calling card. The owners will be in for a shock when they see Paul's face grinning up at them from the doormat in the morning. But that will turn to relief when they realise it's only a warning and nothing has been taken. Alex could steal this car easily, but he's doing the same as Paul and leaving the car owner a cheeky memento of his nighttime exploits instead. Meanwhile, Jess lets herself in using the house key she's just fished from the jacket pocket. She's not too cocky, though, as any noise may give her away. Alex strikes a pose. His calling card is going to cause more shock than any parking ticket, but it will make sure the owners get to keep their car safe in the future. Jess's photo is certain to be a wake-up call for the house owner's home security and could just save them from a real long-stick burglar. Alex thoughtfully posts the car keys back and it's time for the team to leave. With the photographic mementos left behind, the team can only wonder what the householder's reactions will be tomorrow morning. The obvious advice is keep your keys and your belongings out of sight of your door, preferably in another room. Otherwise... Alex, Jess and Paul have rented this shop to show you some of the most common cases of daylight robbery taking place on the high street today. The alternative cosmetics market in the UK is worth millions, and wherever there is money to be made, hustlers will always find a way to exploit it. Today, the team are going to prove that there is still a market for snake oil. Alex, Jess and Paul are hard at work in the back room mixing the cheapest lotions available with our very special secret ingredient, parsley. Then repackage it in expensive looking apothecary bottles to be sold on as luxury organic skincare. Olea skin soaps are simply cheap ones that have had the name taken off and then have been tied up using some string. And the hair care range is rebottled with a drop of sweet smelling oil to be sold with a markup of nearly 3000%. To the average shopper it looks like a perfectly normal store, but it has actually been rigged with hidden cameras and false mirrors so we can watch every move that takes place as we expose this common remarketing scam. The Olea skin range all dressed up and ready to go, but will anyone be convinced enough to buy? The snake oil scam is so clever because it activates our stereotypes. So it stops us from looking beyond the surface. So we see bright colored bottles, we see flashy colored bottles, and we assume that they contain good things. This is something that con artists exploit to part us with our hard earned cash. Excellent. <laughs> Olea Skin is open for business, ready to serve their repackaged fake organic products to any passing punter. 
first impressions are important and she is soon won over by Alex's sales patter. Our most popular product has been this moisturiser because it came it's in fresh. It's all moisturising creams. Uh, last night, they're, they're all put together uh, by hand. And this came, have it, have it, yeah, have it, try. Um, this, the re revitalising moisturiser. It's got an ingredient called Petrocellinum crispum. And it's, uh, it's this little herb that grows up in uh, the mountains of Tuscany. Actually, Petrocellinum crispum is simply the Latin name for parsley. But at least it sounds impressive and every lotion needs a secret ingredient. It smells good, doesn't it? I think it smells very nice. Mm -hmm. This is a fresh batch that we've just got in today. Is Jess is speaking the truth. She bought a vat of it first thing this morning from the market. Although petrocellin and crispum is hard to get, there's an endless supply of it. I mean, it's, we can just keep, uh, keep making this stuff. So all together, that's 12 pounds, please. Great. So our first customer of the day has bought a luxury shampoo and conditioner for 12 pounds. She thinks she's got a great bargain, but the actual cost of producing it was just 40 pence. That's a massive markup of 3,000%. And it's not just women who are interested in Olea skin products. I'm using a hand lotion, but my hair seems to get a bit dry. Oh, right, we do a great, we, go, we do a body lotion, which also doubles up into a hand lotion as well. It's got um, beeswax extract as well, which is great for chapped skin, and it helps with the blood circulations in your hands, so it will rejuvenate your cells and make it a lot smoother. It's also great for wrinkles. But it will be great for wrinkles though as well. So, with a little flattery and some pretty packaging, this customer has bought a tub of six pound parsley hand cream that actually costs 27 pence to produce. Throughout the morning, there's a steady run of customers who are more than happy to part with their cash for this economy class scent at first class prices. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Great, thanks, bye bye. The team can't believe how well it's going. It's another easy sale as she buys an eight pound face cream that's actually a jar of cheap grease worth just 30 pence. I think we need to refill the moisturizer. Okay, reset, reset, there's more coming. Paul's job is to replenish the stocks and he's going to have to work fast as the customers just keep on coming. The women are keen to try, but will they buy? Alex's silver tongue gets to work. It's all got an active ingredient called Petrocellin yes, crispum, which is this plant that grows up in Italy. This has been chilled, you see. I pack them um, in different bags. It's the smell as well, but it's the amount of... When they have active ingredients, and the more fresh they are, the more you should try and keep them refrigerated. The sales start to roll on, and Paul is struggling to keep up with the demand. I think very good value for money, especially because it's like allergy tested, organic. So I think it's a very good price, six pounds. They said the products were made on, all on a farm somewhere in England, but, and I like that idea as well. I don't usually buy organic products, but I was really tempted in there, so I thought, well, it's good value for money, so I thought, yeah, why not treat myself? And finally, it's closing time. It's been a successful day's trading with bargain basement products selling at luxury prices, generating the team a huge profit. It's time for Olea Skin to come clean and tell the customers what they have really bought. I'm really, really irritated, really angry if they're not organic and they've sold them as organic and I hope, would hope someone would go to jail for fraud. But I totally believed her because she said it was organic but it's not. I mean I was in there, the shop was all done really nice, the packaging, the, the smell, they, they seemed really professional. I would never have guessed, I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. Hustlers target this kind of product because there's such a large demand for it. People are more than happy to spend their money on what they think is going to make them look and feel younger. When it comes to buying health and beauty products, always make sure you know what you're buying. If you're not buying from recognised brands, ask for a list of the ingredients. Look those ingredients up. You really should know what you're putting on your skin. We're about to uncover a craze that's got many a tourist reaching for their wallets. They're cheap and easy to produce, but the final product is really quite magical. You'll find them on a street corner near you. These are dancing dolls. If you've ever seen dolls like this on the street, you probably wondered how they worked. If you've ever bought them, you know exactly how they work.
Alex sets up first. It doesn't take long before the dolls are strutting their stuff and attracting passers-by. That's it. You want one? I'll do two for a fiver. Two for a fiver. Yeah. Alex is ready with some high-tech patter. Yeah, pop them in the fridge, mm -hmm. leave them in the freezer overnight. Mm -hmm. That activates the stuff that's in the paper and then yeah. stick them in front of your... Uh, any sort of stereo in front of the speaker. Hit some music. Yeah, music. it just goes along with the bass. If you think that's how they work, then keep watching, and we'll show you the real secret behind the dancing dolls. This shopper is convinced enough by Alex's sales pitch. Yeah? yeah. Alright, mate. Look, yeah. there you go. Jess has a different take on the physics of the dolls. They've got um, wire cords in the legs, and they react to the vibrations that have been sent out by the stereo. And you just sit them down, you watch them dance. So the greater the bass, the more that they'll dance. But they're really quite good because the more bass you put in here, the more that they'll move about. So it's quite funny, and it's like a new design. So hopefully they look good at the back of my car. Alex can't even stick to the same story, and any science fiction he tries yeah. seems to work. Dancing dolls. All you do is you take a doll and you put it on top of your radiator overnight and it just heats up a little bit activates got little magnet filaments inside the paper you put it in front of any speaker starts jumping up and down the music okay. if i put it on top of the radiator the heat will make it um, dance and move this is what they never tell you there's a piece of wire so thin that it just can't be seen going from the cd player to a bag or a box, and inside that is an electric motor which makes the wire go up and down. The doll is sitting on top of the wire, and this is what makes it dance. It certainly isn't magic, and it doesn't do anything if you put these things in the fridge. Well, it makes them cold. Well, it make you cold, doesn't it? Yeah. So, thanks to our invisible string, the dolls dance away, and Alex and Jess notch up their sails. You can put them in your car, or next to your TV, or on top of your TV, and you can start watching them dance. It dances to some electromagnet thing. Does it do that? It don't do it. <laughs> it slowly dawns on people that what they have just bought is a load of old rubbish, just like our hustler's sales patter. Right, stick them on top of your microwave, and every time you turn it on, they stand up and they start dancing. It's not. It's not going to work because it's two bits of string and 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 some coins. I don't know why I bought it. Remember, put them in the freezer overnight and then bring them out. I'm just looking at it again a bit more closely. It looks like a bit of paper with two peas stuck to the bottom. Do you want to do it? Do you want to do it? Do you want a man and a woman? Uh, yeah. That's five pounds? I think it's probably worth about four p. Time to leave. 500 quid up and keen to be far away before anyone returns asking for a refund. Now that you know how they really dance, don't buy them. They don't work. <laughs>